Okay. Open recent. This thing I've been picking at for the past couple of days. I really need to just get some good progress in here. I think I don't know if I want to keep going with the guts or to kind of try to work on the body transitions here. Hmm. Morning, guys. Mm -mm. I did not I did not see the new grease pencil video yet. But I did see the uh, the curve new grease pencil curve that looks pretty cool. Curve mode or whatever. This end over here needs to kind of become more narrow, more like a knife or something. Morning, Dee Dee. Okay, Grease Pencil on Blender Developer's channel. Let's see. Okay, guys, let's see what it is. You're bringing me down a rabbit hole already. It's not these ones, is it? I'll just go on the channel. And I'm going to get a copyright strike now, thanks to you guys. Let me see. Grease pencil primitive curve. That sounds promising. Oh my god. No. Let's see. Oh, I like this. I like this music. This is getting getting stuff done music. There we go. That's very useful. I like that. Very nice. I could see this being a lot more, I mean, this is sort of like NURBS curves. So you could, maybe we can use these curves to actually model stuff after drawing. Very cool. But then again, it's, it is like NURBS curves. So we, could do similar things with NURBS curves. Hi Oliver. Hi, uh, uh, hi Noki. Oh yeah, how are you en enjoying your new homemade menus? Okay, let's, here, we'll test it out. I wonder if my grease pencil menu still works. <laughs> it's been been a while. Oh wait, maybe I could just add a grease pencil here. Oh, well, I guess it doesn't work. Oh wait, yes it does. Mm -mm -mm. Curve. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hmm. Okay. My um, hotkeys are all screwed up here. Oh, you have to alt. Let's 
Sorry guys, my my hotkeys are messed up. Um, so I need to readjust for this. Come on. No. <laughs> oh god. Let me. Eh. I'll 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 go over this tomorrow probably. Whoa. Oh, there we go. Hmm. Okay, so what happens if we convert this? I wonder. Strokes. a lot of points. Hmm. I'll start complaining right now. I, I think it would be cool if this, if these curves, since they sort of have control points when they're created, it would be cool if they could retain those when you convert them into a uh, mesh somehow. So it's only like a couple points. Eh, I don't know. But it is cool. This is definitely a lot more useful, I think, than the um, previous curve tool. It looks good. Very nice. Hello, Greg. Morning. Like this thing is not the correct proportion. This triangle is more up against the edge there. So I need to figure out if the problem is is this the problem that this needs to go in more? I'm gonna keep missing stuff. Is that the problem? I guess in this case I should just um, scale everything maybe so it's not so ugly. And I could scale these ones back so they're a little bit more round. I don't know. And this thing could also be a little bit different. cut over here going all the way through maybe hmm here I'll hit P on this one Th this layer here can be my cutters that that run all the way through the model so in this case I'll just add a solidify that goes really far like one meter two meters or something and that way uh, there we go so we can see it going through the whole model and maybe I need 1.5 meters okay and then we can use this oop, to um, 
dig some holes in, in here. Like, there seems to be a hole over here. And I was just playing around with bevel modifier yesterday and there seems to be a nice little option where we can do vertices. So let's see, vertices first and then the solidify. So now we should be able to, here I'll change this to um, percentage and the percentage to be 100% is the maximum. Ooh, actually that doesn't really work there. the segments here to make it round so I guess I mean I don't know if this is worth the trouble but now at least um, you could do things like start drawing more stuff like this I guess what happens if we go like that okay then we got bevels on here and here or like this so, so you just get like auto bevels here. Whoa, Jesus. So what's going on here? Hmm. What if I do it edge? by edge and by angle. There we go. Maybe this way is easier. crazy shapes and it'll just like auto bevel for us I don't know I don't know if this is good because sometimes you do want to control each one I'm going to work on this a little bit more These also don't make much sense. I'm sorry guys, this was a fruitless endeavor right here. I'm just gonna bevel these. And then cut them into here. What about if we go like this, and then um, I think we could make a more interesting pattern if we go like this, and then add in, let's say we add in a, a cube over here, put 
put it like that. Maybe control B add. I think. What did I do? See if this breaks. Ooh, that worked. Very nice. Um, hey, Alex. Morning, Andy. And um, Alex, do you draw concepts? Yes, I draw concepts. This is this is my little spaceship. Maybe it'd be cool to have um, some sort of engine detail on this part. So we could uh, use, let me use a little section here on the side, like that. Just duplicate that. And then we could detail this out and then What does a jet nozzle look like? Let's look at afterburn. After Taco Bell, here we go. Um, let's see. So I guess this should be a little bit longer so it has some distance to cover. Dumb idea. <sighs> don't need that, don't need that. Mm, was there any other cool? shapes going on there. Oh. Hmm. Alright, I'll try something like that. You know what? Maybe this should... <sighs> Man. Maybe this should all be flat.
that even work? I'm gonna try that. Okay. This may be a horrible idea, but we shall try. Man, I wish you could just go make that go up automatically. I guess we should use object offset. Or, in this case, we just use the offset. Um, turn on her. I just want to put this dot right in the middle. And then put, put our origin to that. And then... I think this is how this works. Or would object offset be better? So what if we add an empty... Oops. Oh, our empty is already here, okay. There's our empty. Right in the middle. Use the empty. Damn it. <laughs> there we go. Not exactly what I had in mind. Okay, I'll go Z and local view just to shut everything else off. Oh my god. So why Oh, there we go. Turn that off. Is there a way to make this so it uh, guess you just gotta do it manually. That seems like a good amount, I think. And then 
I guess I can get rid of this one. Then we also need to make it um, taper in. So let's try uh, simple deform. And let me save this before it crashes. <sighs> taper. to taper this way, right? this even though that's that's not really good because it's stretching but that's pretty cool Yeah, it would be cool if you could set this to be 360 and then change the count on on the fly without having to like manually readjust this. Oops. Oops. Parent this to this. a fun little adventure. <laughs> uh, I guess the cool thing is we can always edit this thing. Oh, it's doing the taper already. not good either <laughs> like covering up the entire thing here there you go <laughs> what the hell? Oh, 
weird. Alright, I have no idea what I'm doing here in the middle. I just need to make up some random something. What's going on over here? Mush. Maybe I just need a box of some sort. Track that. Let's go like this. This is just going to be a very lazy control box here. Animation, yeah, animation nodes looks pretty cool. Is it, is uh, animation nodes and and Svirchok the same type of uh, tool, or are they are they related? I guess <laughs> I've been watching people's um, demos on on Twitter. It looks pretty awesome. Oh, I want to show you guys something real quick here. Too. Let me see this. All right, I've been I've been working on a tutorial and just wrapping it up right now, but I'm pretty excited with with how it's looking. So let me bring it up here. So this is what it is. Let me Basically, this industrial-looking spaceship. Why is it? Why is it freaking out all of a sudden? No, Blender. You're not allowed to freak out. <laughs> we must show the demo. There we go. What? Are you kidding me? Really? This is the first time it's doing this. Anyway, 
this uh, tutorial is almost done and I'm starting to render out some little scenes like this in Eevee and I think it's it's gonna be pretty cool so I'm, I'm pretty excited to to release this soon it's gonna be my first 2.8 Blender 2.8 tutorial and I hope you guys um, like it but yeah I need to do some more angles and camera stuff but man it's it's been really really fun playing with with this stuff in Eevee it would be really nice if the model would work possibly <laughs> I mean I was just using it yesterday well anyway here it is let's see if I can go to uh, this mode here oh my god are you kidding me Do, 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 do. Okay, <laughs> now it works. Um, anyway, here, let me play it. So yeah, guys, all real time. Takes like, I don't know, three seconds to render each frame fully at 1920 by 1080. And, uh, Got some collections going here, some some lights, volumetrics. You could have a ton of these too. It's pretty cool. I need to add in some like booster effects and just wrap it up, but yeah, we get into really nitty gritty stuff here. And we could do some decals, we do some little tiny details and texturing a little bit. Let me try to get get the light to be less crazy. But yeah, that's this is uh, the new tutorial. It should be finished. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Oh shoot! I don't know if I'll be able to finish it this week. But and then I'm going to New York uh, the the next week. So maybe sometime in January or end of December. And uh, also on that note. I'm going to be doing um, my online Blender class again. And so I've, I've just opened up registration for that class. And if you're interested in that, let me find the link. So here it is. Um, we're running one term right now, and it's going pretty well. I, I think this online format is pretty fun because um, I, I feel like it's a little bit easier and because the audio and the the video is like sharp so you don't have to like look at a projector you don't have to listen to me shouting in a room so I I definitely like this um, online format more than uh, in class and basically it's it's run just like a, a normal class. It's it's um 100% live streaming and we go through a bunch of projects going from kind of really simple we do like a really low poly um night alley then we do a a, a vintage tractor with um a little bit of sub D and and modifier stuff. And then we do deep sea diorama. You know what? It might be better for me to just show you these projects. And um, if you've been on the stream before, you you might have seen some of these projects. But basically, it's it's like this. We have a bunch of reference, and then we try to find a cool scene. Like 
do do do. Let me see, where is it? Ah. Here it is. Let me try to make like a simple little scene. Something like that. Just to get used to Blender and the and in interface and everything. Turn off slap shadows here. Yeah, so this is our first project, and some people really go crazy with this one and like do a full on, um, I guess, city <laughs> with it. Let me see if I can show some of the stuff that people have done in the past. Um, where's our Japan night scene? Yeah, um, this guy Brian did this lo this one last term, and Aaron did this one with the psychedelic glass. Oh, yeah, this is the the tractor project it's from Logan and Philip. Aaron and Darren. And then we go into like a deep sea submarine. It looks something like this. This one's from Philip. And uh, oh, yeah, this is Andy here. And we go into the, the sci fi corridor, which is all about instancing and collections and just making repeatable sections. Is some like a modular system and yeah so there's a lot of different variations and then we do we do a little metal ball project like metal ball spaceship yeah so it's it's a pretty fun class if you're looking for some blender um, blender stuff Check it out. And then inevitably some some people in the class just end up going crazy and doing like just wild things on their own. <laughs> like we didn't, we didn't do a boat project, but Philip just ended up I guess getting sucked into it, which is really cool because I don't know, it's it's exciting when when people get into it and uh Sort of just take off on their own. Um, and then this term, what have we been doing? Skype. Let me see. This term we have uh, a bunch of uh, superstars in here. Um, got Lip. Lip is doing some kind of crazy off-road cat <laughs> vehicle. Some subsurface clouds, doing butt cracks. This is Darren's um, metaball mech, in, inspired by cow, cow Yoko Yama, I think. Yeah. And we're looking at tractor shifters. We're looking at. Um, Oh man, this one that Jeremy did. Oh yeah, Darren's really cool corridor. Where is it? Yeah, Max. Max is crazy. I think um, Max is the the sleeper of this term. <laughs> he just came out of nowhere and he's like kicking ass. Um, and then. Albert, Albert's doing some really cool Blade Runner, Becker's apartment stuff. Um, yeah, and we record all the sessions too, so it's all saved. That's another advantage of doing it, doing this online is. You can rewatch it 
you don't have to remember every single little thing because I know it's a lot of information just blasting through. This is Darren doing the, the undersea, the deep sea submarine project. Pretty cool. Yeah. This is Darren's second time, so he I think he's a little bit he's got a head start. And this is Jeremy. And Lip is just and he he's kind of like a art genius, I think. <laughs> um if you look at his paintings and his drawings and stuff, he does a lot of animation work. Um, and it's just, everything he does has this lively kind of feeling to it. So it's really cool to see his work in, th in 3D too. We're, we're, he's, we're trying to get more Eevee into his life now. But anyway, um, man, where's that one that Jeremy did? Oh, actually, you guys should see the tractors, too. These tractors were really cool. So here's a tractor that Max did. So we look at, like, how to do the, the tires, a little bit of sub-D. But overall, everything here is pretty simple geometry. Um, yeah, maybe only the wheels are, like, the tricky part. And Jeremy did a entire, he did a Lamborghini tractor, which yes, the Lamborghini did make tractors before they made cars. And then he did a whole showroom as well. And he's usually doing some above and beyond stuff for the class. And then here's Lip. Lip's always got to have some weird like creature or some cute slash evil looking thing in his scenes. Always some characters going on. And this is Darren's um, super dragster tractor. <laughs> oh my god. I love his his polygon people. So he's got the polygon people. And then this is... Uh, this is Lip's uh, Japan night scene. Which I guess he turned it more into I don't know what this it looks it has a different flavor definitely and this is the birdies the birds first appearance here but yeah it's it's a fun class I hope um I hope some of you guys will join oh man this one that Jeremy did was crazy. Oh god. I love all this lighting in here. Man. And then we got friends. I wanted to where's that one that Jeremy did? Jeremy did a scene last uh, class that was just crazy. It was really sick almost. Um, where is it? Jeremy, where's your sicko scene? Oh. Here it is. Let me, let me see if I can show it. Downloads. Why does this window keep closing? Where's Jeremy? Yeah, his greenhouse. This scene is nuts.
I think, I think we gotta wait for it to compile a little bit. But his idea is... Wait, what are we doing here? Oh, we were trying to do a camera move. Anyway, yeah, his idea was to have, like, if, the, if there was a moon colony or something, and, uh, you know, a permanent one, and eventually the colonists are going to pass away. So the way they deal with funerals and bodies is your, your body just gets wrapped in these bags and then becomes food for the for the plants becomes food for the I guess to grow agriculture for the for the colony and I, actually that's kind of a nice idea it's not really that morbid I mean it, it is it's sort of that romantic idea of like our body going back to the earth and but it, I guess it is a little bit creepy that you might be eating a salad and you know oh that's that's Bobby or like a carrot or cucumber or something. But I really love this idea and I love the way that this looks like the the plants outside the window with the wet wet um, glass or the condensation on the glass. It's really cool. Anyway. Jeremy is doing some really interesting work lately. I guess that is the cycle, but not if you get buried in a coffin. Or, I mean, well, it's not, it's just not that fast. Hey, everywhere. Well, anyway, that, that, that was my uh, little spiel. I just opened opened up registration for the class. So if you know anybody who, who would be interested in, in a Blender online class, please let them know. And, uh, we'll be starting that January 9th um, after the holidays. Uh, the classes are from, um, they're two hours each, and it's seven weeks long. So they're, yeah. They're kind of like bite-sized. Each, each term we cover one idea, sort of, and then build on it. Let me see what it looks like. Yeah. So each one sort of adds one one more element to the mix and gets a little bit more complicated. But and a lot but a lot of it too is is just repetition and practice. So we, you know, we're continuing using the same tools um a lot of the time just in different ways. And then um kind of try to save more advanced stuff like subdivision modeling towards the end and a little bit of animation and EV stuff. Well, actually we do EV all the way from the beginning. So like all those projects I just showed you are, are from each of these weeks. And um, yeah, we, we do EV from the first week on. And, um, yeah. Oh, 
Hey Max. Thanks for uh yeah, we were just looking at your work. <laughs> I don't know if you were you saw that. Can I do a video on nano blocks? I don't know. Am I qualified to do a video on that? I get blocked all the time. I feel like I've seen some pretty good videos about that on YouTube. Or I feel like Jake Parker probably has a video about that. get blockage I usually just um, where are you? I, I look at reference and do studies I just go draw some people yeah just do stuff watch a movie go for a walk I don't know. take a nap I guess it's not good if you're like bashing your head against the wall with your creative block. How do you fix that? I don't know, maybe you just walk away. Walk away from your problems. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. Don't do that. See, Furious Fat Man says, was the transition from Mono to Blender difficult? Um, uh, it's not too bad. I mean, I, I switched over and ended up liking Blender more. So, I think it's worth it to try it. You never know.
Oops. I wonder if this would work. I feel like this would fail. Uh, let me just add these two. Definitely does not look like how I wanted. How about this? Did this fail? Yes, it uh, kind of does fail. That doesn't make any sense. <sighs> I did walk away. I stopped doing art completely for one year, learned web development programming, but I felt I needed to do art. I spent a ton of money on tutorials, so I came back. But the problem that contributed to me walking away persisted. What was the problem that contributed to you walking? You were just stuck? think of all this stuff too like it doesn't really come out of nowhere so you gotta f you you put out stuff you like output things but you need to intake stuff too so you have to take in something it could be any kind of information or inspiration like I don't know you, you take in stuff like um, Charlie was saying you've taken stuff from your books that you're reading, you've taken stuff from your movies, taken stuff from life, walking around, doing stuff, I don't know, and studies, like um, what we were we were doing on the channel for a while is just going on to, um, just doing little five minute studies of random stuff, like all this mechanical stuff in here. So, I mean, when I get stuck, I, I just do, I'll just draw this toilet, and then somehow you start to come up with ideas when, when you're drawing other things, you know. So, so you don't have to make up things necessarily, just, just take in information and study things, and then hopefully something will pop out. You're, it's really hard to just come up with, with, with brand new things out of nowhere, is I guess what I'm saying. So I would do, I was doing like little things like this, the cross sections, 
the guts and then and then after that then you do then you can do your little cross section drawings let me show you the cross section stuff I was doing so yeah here's our little Japan studies do a little watercolor little drawings traffic stuff just you can make little games out of it too like oh here I I just want to pay attention to the shadows and even leave out the line sometimes or a lot of that cross-section stuff leads to weird like deconstructed designs that look like this where we take off the panels and then you see the guts inside so that's that's the kind of thing that I like to do um, and then yeah, what else do we have this is when YouTube died for a second I don't know just do drawings of random things this was um camping trip so we did a little camping camping vehicle tractors I always love tractors where's my cross-section drawings I had oh here we are so here we go we've got the cross sections and then cross sections so it's not coming out of nowhere everything is sort of indirectly related to each other here we go there's a I was inspired by this um, you guys have seen the intro to Westworld then you know what I'm talking about I need to draw more. I haven't been drawing much lately. It's all blender. Blender, blender, blender. Better to see Spider-Verse in 3D. I don't, I would, I imagine that the 3D would not be as good as 2D. Um, I saw it in 2D and it was pretty, it was a lot. It was pretty overwhelming just even as a 2D movie. So I, I definitely would not recommend seeing it in 3D. Um, I would probably get sick if I watched it in 3D. And you, and you know how like 3D movies, it kind of ruins the color a little bit and some things get a little bit dull for the 3D effect. So I, I would rather have the pure color and the sharp, um, everything sharp and crisp. Um, and what, uh, yeah, just watch the 2D version, man. Such a condition, I just mix two or three stills from animation movies and try to blend them. And somehow my mind tries to mess with new stuff. Nice. Yeah, you're just blending, put all the ingredients in your brain and blend it together it's vomited out on the page that's how we do it okay. hello skywad
Man, this thing never ends. <laughs> I need to finish this. Oh. How are we going to do this? All of these things have to blend together somehow. Oh, God. No. I wish I could just smudge it all together, like in Photoshop. these two first. Burbank. There's reflections from the white background on it. Was that with a semi-trans overlay or an opaque color? Um, which one are you? Let's, see which one. Let's go back to the art stations. Um. it again spider where am I I'm buried in here buried under all the fan art are you talking about this one or or this one 
Oh, this one. I think this one was opaque. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I just picked a very, a little bit lighter version of this pink and started painting it in. But the way we're doing these is, um, it's all hard brush, uh, round brush. You see, you see the round, uh, it's a round brush, but with, um, 100% opacity everywhere. So 100% opacity. And, and the way you get the interesting shapes with the round brush is you have to, you have to overlap a lot and erase. So, um, this is going to be embarrassing. Oh, oops. <laughs> Let me see if I can find my round brush. This is the work that does not, is not supposed to see the light of day here. All right, so if we have a round brush, I'll try to do it on him. And actually, I want this to be 100% opacity. How do I turn that off? Density. Okay, so now there's like, no matter what my pressure is, it's always solid. Because you want to keep it really consistent. And then you might overpaint a little bit, possibly. And then you might go a little bit lighter here. Like, okay, let's say his chin and his ears, maybe. I don't know. And it, maybe he's really shiny. <laughs> this is just a very shiny man here. Oops. So you go in with your next value, 100% opacity. The nice thing about this opacity thing is it's one, it's consistent so you know it's always going to be working properly um, actually I screwed it up over here see there's like slight um, variations in here so it's actually tough to see but there's slight variations in here because I didn't have my um, opacity locked there we can you can be subtle with it too but then see how you make interesting shapes by cutting into the other one or like here let's say we cut into cut into here so that's basically it and then at the end you get rid of all the extra could say like okay he has some black mask you guys are bringing me down all the rabbit holes today oops so this one let's say he has a super shiny mask it could be like Kind of like how it looked originally. Oops. So, um, yeah, you cut away. Cut away. I don't know. The round brush is actually really cool if you use it to cut into itself. Actually I like I like how it looked at the beginning.
Should have done that on a different layer. Oh boy. You can also select stuff. I mean, lasso stuff off, and then and you have a better chance of getting those clean edges. Oops. I should probably put another layer for different colors and stuff. Yeah, cut away, erase. sharp points. Ah, you got the idea. Um, boom, 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 boom. Okay, guys, I think that's enough internet for today. Um, it's been nice hanging out with you. And, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I hope you um, think about that, that class. If you know anybody who would want to take a Blender class, please send them that... Uh, that syllabus to see if they're interested. Here, I'll dump it there one more time just in case. What am I doing? Wait, no, that's not it either. Here it is. Alright, guys. Have a good day. See you next time. <laughs>